All right, so my next subject, female subject, Constance Makievich, Irish uh, revolutionary suffragette. Now, I am playing with the pencil sketch I did and warping it and seeing if I like that more or less than the original. And actually, I like it less than the original. And sometimes that happens, right? You don't always want to map directly to your source. Um, also, because I have her lips closed, her jaw isn't going to be quite as, as um, long as it is when her, her teeth are shown, as, as here. And I'm playing with her hairstyle a little bit, but what I can do is not make her eyes so lidded. So if I go back to my sketch and play with it a little bit, I'm just going to mess with it freehand. I'm going to tug here a little bit, tug here, just to widen the shoulders a bit. And then with the eyes, I'm just going to, because this will inform my painting, duplicate them and then warp those separately. It gives me more points of articulation. And I can get more subtlety in them that way. And it's always good to be looking at your navigator. They're becoming kind of anime-ish anime eyes a little bit, but I'm just trying to get a little bit more of an arc in the top. Okay, now it's a big difference there. So now I'm going to take them and just straight scale them down, line them up with the nose. And yeah, she has more um, vibrancy, at least in the top of her eyes there. a little bit more room to play with. And then what I can do is simply erase out the lid underneath. This eraser is a little, a little nutty. I have it on a scatter brush setting. I don't know my brushes. All right, and then where's the other place where she might look a little sadder than I want her to look? Here, her eyes are brought to the front a little bit more. It's also in her mouth. So here, the mouth is fairly flat, not drawn down. So I might play with duplicating the mouth as well. and just warping that very slightly. So I think my sketch is pretty accurate, pretty well um, referenced. You see that makes a huge difference. Now, I wanted to look steely and formidable so that's a little too soft so let me use my eraser to soften that upswing and that's that's good so that's what i'm going for so i'm going to save that as my sketch all right now my sketch 
always want to look at the size, is 8 by 8 inches by 400 pixels per inch. That's just how I scanned it. Whereas if I look at my George Bernard Shaw painting, it is 16 by 20 by 318. So next thing I want to do is decide on the composition. I like this composition. Using those third lines, kind of have it hit her eye, hit the side of her neck. Yeah, that makes it nice. Her, her one eye is centered, but up. It's a strong composition for a portrait. Nothing revolutionary, like she was, but it holds the eye well. All right. And then I'm going to make that 16 by 20. Now I could go to image size and force it, or I can use my crop tool and just type in 16 by 20 here in my proportions. And it will give me that box automatically. So it looks like I was pretty close. Now I can shift it. That's getting a little close to the um, top of her hat. So let's move this down a little bit. like so, and then crop that. Or, well, maybe just leave it like this. Okay, so this is 16 by 20 right now. Or very close to what pixels can do. Now I want to make the resolution what I want. So I go to image size, and first I won't check resample, and I'll make it 16 by 20, and then I'll hit resample and make it 318. So it matches exactly what George Bernard Shaw was. I don't know how I ended up at 318 necessarily, but that gives me a lot of, lot of leeway for printing really large and getting a lot of of fidelity from the brush strokes and all the pixels I'm using. Now edges become very important. So this bottom edge, if I don't deal with it, and if for some reason I leave my sketch as part of my painting, it might be an issue. So I'm actually going to use the patch tool. I circle the area that's a problem, <laughs> and then I'm just going to copy it from this layer or patch it from this layer. Duplicate that, have that floating on top. Okay, so I've got my sketch. Let me combine all of these sketch layers just with Command E. And I've got my reference underneath. And you can tell that I've changed it quite a bit, but I like how I've changed it. You know, it stretches her out a little bit and it gives more subtlety to her face. So what can I do with that reference image? Well, I want to have it open in another Photoshop panel. So open with Photoshop. I want my, my new painting here, the Irish Notable, to be at the front. And then I have a variety of different inspiration images. I can close my Bernard Shaw. And now that she's open, I can go to Window, Arrange, put them all next to each other. And Hans Hoffman, I'll be using probably a little bit later. Give my painting a little bit more space. And then this was an interesting reference. Just a watercolor experiment. But I love these textures. And I thought those colors were so appropriate. This is just a painting that was made from the same reference, right? And it's just interesting to see. I don't really love the choices they've made. They've done a lot of pellet, pellet knife painting with either acrylic or oil. And it's really bold. So this kind of shows me 
I want something more lyrical and not so choppy as this. Um, they also really underplay the eyes here, in my opinion. So I want to make it a little bit dreamier. So a little bit more like this with some of the, the odd flourishes in the quirks of, of her historical character. So this is a, a different technique. Instead of going right to a, a base color painting where I'm stealing and I'm trying to customize a brush, in this case to be pretty soft, I'm going to do something a little bit more out of the compositing playbook of digital art. And I'm going to steal some of these textures. All right, so let me, for instance, these eyebrows and forehead, really, and eye, really, and nose. Let's just take this whole section here, maybe even the cheekbone. Let's take a lot of this. Command C, copy it. Go back to my original, Command V, put it above my sketch. Let's lock the reference, let's lock my sketch. And now I'm going to take this composite and really just treat it like, like a collage, but as something that I can move around. And this is going to give me a different kind of base color. Something very different to react to. But I'm still going to kind of follow the same principle of getting rid of the whites. What I say is kill whitey. <laughs> right? Now let me take the opacity down a little bit so I can line it up a little bit better. You can see with this cloudiness of watercolor, it works really well. And you have to be willing to give up a fair amount of control. And I'm noticing some differences right away from the reference. But the hairline's a little different, right? Yeah, so those eyes are working fairly well. And remember, I don't need to use this at 100% opacity. So I think 79 was working pretty well. Okay, now what if I just take the seam of it? Because this is, this is digital painting. This will all be worked with. I really like how it deals with the, the jawline, the ear, and the cheekbone. Though. If I take all of this and then I warp that, bring that hairline up. Let's see. Move these things around a little bit. And I can see it in the navigator. Yeah, that's working pretty well. All right. I don't think I want these these really pink, hot pink lips. But I love kind of the, the colors and the effects of the upswept hairstyle here. And I love this. So I'm going to bring this in. Maybe to inform the hat a little bit. Copy it. Paste it on top. Mess with it. Oh, don't want to warp it yet. Sorry. Flip it. Free transform is always my starting point because that allows you to rotate and scale. And just mess with it. This looks like a beautiful bird's head, actually. Actually, a lot of what I think of when I think of her, uh, her hat. So if I move that up there, Take it down to about 79%. Now I can erase away. And I've already set my eraser, but this time I can use it in much more broad strokes. 